Six years ago, my grandparents bought a large open field behind their house. With the help of numerous family members and friends, we planted 29 rows of grapevines. I joined my grandfather in the following years to take care of the grapes and hopefully lead them to a harvest. We were successful in that first year. It was a large harvest, and they were able to make quite a few bottles of wine from it. I, of course, did not have any, but I heard that it turned out great. Our vineyard is in Skagit Valley. Grapes are a rare crop there. You'll find more in eastern Washington. Potatoes, however, are much more prevalent. Coincidentally, there is a potato field planted just across the county block from our vineyard, placing us downwind from it. Every few years, 2,4-dichlorophenoxyacetic acid, 2,4-D, a pesticide, is sprayed on the potatoes. The last time our neighboring potato field was sprayed was in 2010. Although this process is very beneficial for the potatoes, its effects are detrimental to grapes, and our grapes had no idea what hit them. As the year carried on, the vines continued to look worse and worse. I was only part of work on the vineyard when work had to be done, so as the vineyard was dying, I wasn't very much in the loop about everything that was happening. But I've heard that my grandfather was very angry at the owners of the potato field. Mercifully, he didn't sue. It could very well have been because of his graceful and forgiving heart, but I think his declining health had something to do with it too. He died in late October of that year. Outside of the house, the vineyard reflected the grief of that day. After some time had gone on, my dad, grandmother, and I continued working. As I was left to clean up things between the rows, mowing the grass and whatnot, they were researching the chemical responsible for the damage to our vineyard. Now, three years later, we've watched the health of the grapes return and continue to hope for a harvest. But now, I have the opportunity to learn for myself about what caused this plague of sorts in the first place. Um, so... What do you know about 2,4-D? Well, what I know is purely from personal experience mm -hmm. because we had planted a vineyard beginning in about 2005. Uh, it was one of those um, projects that my husband always wanted to do and thought he would enjoy it very much. And so therefore we planted about 2,500 vines. Uh, the plants did very well, but unbeknownst to us, uh, we happened to plant in the Skagit Valley, and the Skagit Valley is known for potato production. <clears throat> Unfortunately, red potatoes, uh, during their growing process towards the end, the red potato is sprayed with 2,4-D which affects its color and but uh, we had no idea at the time except for what we have read is that 2,4-D and great vineyards or great vine is like the expression the having a canary in a coal mine and 2,4-D causes the grapevines and the grape leaves to begin to shrivel, which means that uh, the canopy of leaves that are on the vines begin to dry, and it's therefore the grapes do not get any nutrients, and they too begin to die. Um, when was it that um, your vineyard was hit with the 2,4-D? The vineyard was hit in, I'd say, July, June or July of 2010. And we began noticing a change in the leaves that we had not seen before. It was mainly on the uh, west side of the vineyard. And then we began to see a progression that was moving right across every row in the vineyard. Who did you seek help from? Well, we um, called on some of our friends who also grow grapes. We also um, contacted the Western Washington um, 
agriculture area, the experiment station, which is out here on Memorial Highway. They came out and looked, and at first they really didn't believe us, um, which has been which was very difficult for us because we knew something was really wrong. Well, then they took some of the leaves back and ran tests, and it was there was no doubt at all that we had been hit with 2,4-D. Mm -hmm. uh, what were the next steps that you took? Well, it was a shock because it meant we lost all the grapes that were growing for that season. We had had a very good year, 2009. Uh, for us, personally, uh, we had picked a little over four ton of grapes and then to have all of it gone or close to being gone in a short period of time was devastating to us. Uh, but my husband chose uh, to contact the potato grower uh, that's our neighbor actually. And he also contacted the company who does all the spraying here. And um, they said that they didn't know we were here as far as a grape grower was concerned. He decided that he wanted them to be knowledgeable about it, but he chose not to ask for any type of financial payback for this loss. Okay. Uh, lastly, uh, in the last few years, how has it affected or gotten better? <clears throat> the, pot, the problem is still there. Uh, mainly because potatoes are still being grown here. Because of the area and where we live, uh, we still get what's known as a drift, which means that even if they were spraying 20 miles away, and the drift could still come and still go over the vineyard if it were existing. Uh, last year, which would have been 2013, uh, we also saw some on the north edges of the vineyard. The potato grower, who is just adjacent to us, has been so careful when they spray. Um, there hasn't been red potatoes there, so they haven't sprayed the 2,4-D. But unfortunately, we're still susceptible to it. And even a potato grower who happens to be two or three miles away from us, if they spray 2,4-D, it's going to attract and attack the vineyard. Today, 240 is the world's most used herbicide. For the past 65 years, it's become more and more widely used. It appears to work by causing uncontrolled cell division in the vascular tissue, which basically means that it just grows and grows the inside, the cells, until it can't handle it. And this causes grapes to shrivel up and keep it from getting the nutrients it needs, which causes it to die. Just an empty 